guys. So, I told you guys to get it to 30 likes. So y'all got it to last time I checked. Let me check real quick. Y'all got it to 36. So here we are for the discussion video for episode 420 of Gotham, that old corpse. Now, there were a lot of things in this episode that stuck out to me. It was such great writing this whole story arc with from Jerome to his brother has just been great from like the beginning. When did we first see Jerome? Like season one? Season one? It's just been great from the beginning. Like from bringing in his Jerome to bringing in his brother. It's all taken a twist and a turn that I don't think any of us expected. Um, but let's get to 420 though. So, uh, we open to the graveyard scene with all of Jerome's followers around his grave, having their little eulogy thing, spitting alcohol in his grave, ew. And then we see Harley. I think, out of all the Harleys that I've seen, out of all the incarnations of her that I've seen, uh, New 52 Harley, uh, old fashioned Harley with the gesture suit and all that. I think that the Gotham version is my favorite. Also, that that's also counting Suicide Squad Harley. I think that the Gotham version is my favorite just because her outfit was so gothic and so fitting in with the show. No pun intended but so fitting in with the show. And uh, Echo, her actress, <laughs> you know, sometimes a great actor or actress doesn't need to say a lot of words to get their point across. And this actress, whoever her name is, I don't know what her name is. Somebody told me down in the comments, but her portrayal of Echo as a person is just great. I'm really hoping that uh, we might get like a backstory episode about her sometime. Like, um, I believe it was in Batman the Animated Series that they did that whole episode with the backstory about Harley and how she met the Joker and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm out of love. I would love to see an episode like that. <laughs> When she first showed up and they were like, who are you? And she like moved her shoulders like, like, like this, like beyond creepy. Sent chills <laughs> down my spine. Um, so after that, the next thing that I want to talk about was Jerome's funeral video thing that he sent to Jim in the police station. I, and I need to stop saying Jerome. It was Jeremiah, but it, this video, it it reminded me of something from the Batman animated series. You guys might be familiar with it, but it reminded me of the following clip. Dear friends, today is the day the clown cried. And he cries, not for the passing of one man, but for the death of a dream. The dream that he would someday taste the ultimate victory over his hated enemy. For it was the Batman who made me the happy soul I am today. How I agonized over the perfect way to thank him for that. Perhaps with a cyanide pie in the face. <laughs> or an exploding whoopee cushion playfully planted in the Batmobile. <laughs> but those dreams were dashed by the weasley little gunsel sitting there in our midst. The cowardly, insignificant Garneth, who probably got lucky when Batman slipped on the slime trail this loser left behind him. 
This mound of diseased hyena filth who's not fit to lick the dirt from my spats! But I digress. Yeah, I just really couldn't help but think of that little Joker eulogy that uh, the Joker gave when he thought Batman was dead in the, in, in the animated series. For some reason, it was the first thing that popped into my head, but I couldn't help of thinking about that as an Easter egg. Uh, moving on to just Jeremiah himself. Uh, throughout the episodes leading up to this point, and there's been some debate about this in the comments of other videos that I've seen in the comments of the reaction video that I've done. I don't think that Jeremiah started out as some innocently smart character. I mean, Jerome even said before all this went down when he met face to face with his brother in the labyrinth in the first episode that we saw the two of them together. He was like, you told a lot of stories and lies to our, to our mom about me and you did it for your own benefit and you made me who I am. So I don't think he's a particularly innocent character. I think for sure that if roles were reversed, I think if we were looking at a more sane person, I think if Jerome was sane, I think Jeremiah would have been the insane homicidal version. I think that was partly of the saw that he was keeping up for a uh, gain or what what have you. I think that the gas is affecting him from a mental standpoint, but uh, I think that it's just bringing out something that's already been there as Jerome has stated. Um, I love what they're doing with him in terms of his outfits. Looking back at the Tim Burton versions of the Batman villains, like the Joker and things like that, the outfit, his hair, and how it looks like Mark Hamill's, excuse me, Mark Hamill's version of the Joker in the Batman animated series. Um, I love though, I love how Cameron is taking this and kind of, because if we're being honest, we saw him go through certain changes with um, the way that he did Jerome, which is understandable. He was getting his feel for the character, getting to know what he wanted Jerome to be like and what not. Um, I like that with these two brothers, we got both sides of the Joker, which is one is serious Jeremiah, like Heath, Le Heath Ledger's Joker. Still kind of that insane funniness, but not as much as like, say a Mark Hamill or a Jack Nicholson type Joker. But um, I'm really looking at the Red Band trailer. I'm really excited to see where Jeremiah is gonna go because he looks like someone down in the comments of the uh, Red Band trailer stated that I think that they think that um, he thinks that the gas is taking on a less of an effect than he thought it was taking on, which I kind of agree with. I do think that as time passes on, in the Gotham story arc if we do get a season five, hopefully we get a season five, that um, the insanity gas will definitely take more of its toll because there were a lot of people asking in the comments of that video where his humor was and you know when he, um, when Bruce was sleeper holding him there, he was like, you can't let Jerome win this fight. Um, he was like, drone, beat me, that'll be the day, and then ha 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 ha. So, we know it's there, it's just not full out there yet, 
and I don't want him to be full out if we're honest. I want a balance between the two. I want like a Heath Ledger balanced with a Mark Hamill, if that makes sense. But I love how they're kind of paying homage to all the Jokers that came before. But let's see, what else? Yes, okay, so we know that in the next episode, Bruce uh, gets called from Jeremiah and is like, I took Alfred, come get him, and we go through this whole killing joke sequence. The killing joke, I love how they're doing this because, excuse me, because Barbara, our bat girl, is not born yet. And for those of you who are familiar with the Killing Joke comics, it's originally, you know, the Joker grabs Barbara and kind of tortures her, takes pictures of her naked body, grim, I know, and um, plasters them all around to make Jim Gordon go insane when he eventually kidnaps Jim Gordon, but instead of that happening, now we have Bruce, which I think is a really good twist on things on Gotham's part. But um, I also saw in the trailer where, um, what was it? They were talking about John Glare, and I also couldn't help but think of, um, Johnny Frost, there's a comic that's just called um, Joker by Brian Ar Artisolo, I think is how you say it. It's a great comic, y'all should check it out, but it's um, Johnny Frost is one of the Joker's uh, main hench henchmen, his right hand man, and that comic is completely from his point of view. And I kind of thought about Johnny and John Glare as that Johnny Frost character stand in so I really love how they're gonna how they're making all these homages to all the Joker comics but um as far as torturing Bruce goes looking at looking at the trailer I couldn't I couldn't help but think of back in episode 19 when Rachel Gould was like Gotham will be burned down to a crisp and seeing Jeremiah do all these things like <laughs> burning people alive, burning the buildings in Gotham, burning everything to the ground. I was like, okay, so this is it. This is when Batman is officially born. Seeing Bruce put on the mask and all those things. I was like, okay, this is this is gonna be it, we aren't gonna see him don the suit, but we, but we're gonna see him put on the suit that he's been doing like since what last season he got it, I think, or was it this season? Someone remind me. But we're gonna see him put on that suit and kind of become this Batman esque character, which I'm totally down for, and I love how they're overlapping the Joker storyline with Rachel. I think it's absolutely wonderful now just some little things that I noticed in the episode the lighting oh my god the lighting okay so in the scenes where Bruce and Jeremiah are in the bunker together the blue and green lighting on his face was just I'm a sucker if you guys watch these reactions I'm a sucker for like little lighting hints I mean the first time we see Jerome and you go back and you look at that episode when they zoom out and you see like the whole of the circus and the ferris wheel is purple and green like I'm a sucker <laughs> for for those things but um the lighting that was on his face, like the blue and green, that kind of made it seem like his veins were popping out. There was kind of like green in his bloodstream. I really appreciated that. The uh, lighting when they were in the graveyard that I talked about in the reaction video just kind of 
he wasn't quite in the spotlight, but he was in there enough to where it looked like he was kind of fading away. So sanity was kind of fading away in a sense, which I really appreciated. <sighs> Let's see. I know I didn't put this in my reaction, but it deserves to be talked about because it was just darn cute. Riddler and Lee. I shipped them. I didn't think I'd be down for it at first, but I'm down. They're super cute, <laughs> and uh, the way that they pair together in terms of smartness and like Lee's kind of the heart and he's kind of the brains. I, I love that scenario and the way that he took so much smart care in breaking her out in the GCPD. It was just hilarious to watch and adorable. And a good break from all the darkness that was going on, if we're being honest. I wouldn't have edited it out unless um, all those Joker scenes didn't uh, take on most of the time. My goal always is to get, ever since we come back to this, is to get all our reactions down to at least 19 minutes on my little tracker. And I was like, okay, Riddler and me, I'm sorry, y'all are gonna have to, y'all are gonna have to make some sacrifices, but their whole interaction was just really cute and adorable but yeah i can't wait to see what's gonna happen in the next episode and all these different references that they're gonna make and are making with um their their version of the joker i just love how they're paying homage it's it's expected and i'm sure to the other actors if mark hamill's watching this because i know he tweeted Cameron Monaghan one time saying that he did a great job. If any of the older Joker actors were to watch this, I'm sure they would appreciate what's going on. But but yeah, um, as far as moving forward into season five, I hear and I googled it. I uh, I watched a YouTube video about it. Um, on Screen Rant, and I trust Screen Rant for a lot of things. And uh, apparently, this season they're going by a comic book story arc. And I need to read it. I'm gonna look into it and pick up some copies as soon as I can. But they're going into a comic book story arc um, that's called No Man's Land. This whole entire season has been based on that story arc, and um. They talked to a producer of the show and they said if they do get a season five, is it gonna be like a soft reboot? Which, I mean, they said they replaced some of the cast. I, I get it, they're children. Part of me doesn't want to see David leave. I enjoy him as Bruce and I know that if they were to take like one to two years off because he's like 16 now he'll be hitting that age like maybe like he'll be he'll be around like 18 ish they could come back have him be full-fledged batman in the series but um if they were to reboot it and make it into a full official batman series i wouldn't be mad at that i just you just have to be sure with those things that the adult actors are as, <laughs> are as good as the kids. And I and I know that that sounds backwards, but these kids that have played these characters that we love so much on Gotham have done such a great and amazing job. And their adult counterparts should be just as good, if not better. Um, yeah, so that's the, that's my theory for the next couple of episodes, and it's and it will be a great way to end this arc. To be honest, that Jeremiah is the reason that Bruce gets reborn in Rachel's words and becomes the Dark Knight of Gotham. That would just be a great way to end the series, and hopefully they get a season five. I'm not sure that they will, but. We can always hope and we can always 
bombard Fox with our tweets and things of that nature and maybe they'll listen but yeah tell me what you guys thought about this episode what your theories are in the comments what your favorite parts of the episodes were my personal my favorite part not only just when jeremiah revealed him himself that was masterfully done just amazing but um when he i don't i don't know how they rigged this they probably rigged this somehow put some type of mechanism underneath his arm to push the gun forward but y'all know what i'm talking about when all drones followers were, were laughing and the one dude was like jerome is victorious at last and he went and then and, sh and shot him in the face i that that was just unexpected and it got everybody quiet and it was just one of those moments that i really enjoyed the mechanics of oh wow do you guys think because this season five do you think somebody's gonna die i know i know alfred can't die because he's alfred but somebody has to die in order for Bruce to become Batman, right? It can't be Selena. It has to be something. For him to become Batman, it has to be something that pushes him over the edge. I. I certainly do think Jeremiah could push him over that edge, but I think. I think that. Jeremiah would have to take somebody. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Tell me what you guys, tell me what you guys think about that. I'm not sure if anyone's gonna die. I know, I know Selena can't die. Um, he doesn't really have an emotional relationship to Tabitha. And I know Tabitha would be there to go after Selena. Alfred can't necessarily die because he's Alfred. There's, there's not that many people I think that Jeremiah could kill right now that would just devastate Bruce to the point where he's like, okay, Gotham Mupa needs a kick in the face and that kick in the face will be Batman. I, I don't know. Just tell, tell me what you guys think, what your theories are. If someone will die, who do you think it is? That's my question to, to y'all. And yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your theories and your guesses on who may or may not die in the comment section. And yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.